would add to that, that you actually see Jesus in the biblical accounts acting in ways as, that you've never seen him act before. Um, throughout the entirety of his ministry, you see that Jesus is constantly being that rock or that foundation that his disciples always go to. His disciples go to him for support, for wisdom, for guidance in life, for strength. Um, they are completely dependent upon him. But in this scene, um, and it's consistent with the biblical text, you see that Jesus is in some way dependent upon the disciples, maybe for the first time in his ministry. And he is going to them repeatedly. He's asking them to stay awake with him. He's asking them to pray with him and to pray for him. He's asking them to watch um, with him. And so you do see Jesus almost you know, exhibiting this outward expression of his humanity and saying, you know what, I need these guys in my darkest hour. So, so Brandon, having talked about the emotional stress that Jesus was in and that the physical outward signs were manifested both in scripture and in this movie, uh, what do you think the cause for this, this stress was? There are a lot of theologians and scholars that have talked about what caused Jesus' stress, what made him fearful in the cliff there. You know, Peter speculates that Jesus looks as though he is afraid of something or that maybe he is in danger. Um, and there have been a lot of scholars and theologians that have spent a lot of time on this. Some say and have speculated that maybe Jesus was afraid of being arrested. Um, here's a man who was innocent, never committed any sin, and here we're coming maybe as many as a thousand soldiers to arrest him and take him captive. Others have speculated that he was afraid of death. Um, and the reason that you see the Son of God torn up is because he was about to face death, and death was symbolic from the Old Testament to be something that God never intended for his people. Um, but when sin entered into the world, death became a consequence of that sin. So some scholars speculate maybe he's afraid of death. Um, others have said maybe he's afraid of the physical pain and the torture. Um, when we get into the scourging scenes next week, I think um, it is only logical to conclude that maybe Jesus was afraid of, of that torture. Um, and while all of those um, explanations are probably, there's some level of truth in them. I don't think that they, they fully hit the mark. Um, I think what we have to do is we have to go back to what Jesus was praying in the garden. And when he prayed in the garden, he kept saying over and over and over again, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And it's something that Tommy alluded to this morning. Um, the cup throughout, throughout the history of the Bible, when you study the text as a whole, it is re it's constantly referring to divine wrath. Okay? And so there are a lot of passages. Um, I'll list some of them for you. In Psalm chapter 75, verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, In the hand of the Lord is a cup. He pours it out, and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. Isaiah 51, verse 17 says, Rise up, O Jerusalem, you, have, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath. Isaiah 51, 22 says that from that cup, the goblet of my wrath, you will never drink again. Um, you have passages like Jeremiah 49, verse 12, and even Revelation 14, 10, um, where people are depicted as worshiping the Antichrist. And in that text, it says that they will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. And so when we go back to the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and we're listening to that prayer that he repeats over and over and over again, and he constantly says, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I believe that the thing Jesus was afraid of most was the divine wrath of his heavenly Father. Yes, Jesus was afraid of being arrested. Yes, he was afraid of physical pain and torture. Yes, I think he feared death. But I think that here is Jesus who has sat and who is sitting now at the right hand of his heavenly father, who knows what kind of wrath his father is capable of, who has seen things like the flood, um, the plagues on the Egyptians, who um, created hell himself. And now he is only hours away from experiencing firsthand the wrath of his heavenly father. And I think that that more than anything else, is what has the Son of God really shook, shook to the core. Now, at one point, Jesus goes back to, to, to his disciples to find them sleeping. And he, he uh, wakes them up and he asks them this, to stay awake and to pray so that they can avoid temptation. How much of Jesus' anxiety do you think was his concern also for his followers and that they were about to be separated from the person who they've been dependent upon for the past few years and everything that they've done and all of their 
their spiritual and physical needs. Jesus was their foundation, and he's about to go away. They're about to see him tortured and killed. How much concern do you think he had at that point in time that they might uh, lose their faith or, or be tempted or just to stray in some fashion? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, the biblical imagery that's used is the imagery of a group of sheep that are being scattered by the wolves. And so I think that there's probably a lot of truth to the fact that Jesus had a concern about his disciples and about what they were about to face. He even says at one point in the Gospels as he's conversing with Peter, he says, Peter, now you need to be ready because Satan has asked permission to sift you as wheat. And so I think Jesus knew what was about to come their way and he wanted them to be prepared. He was concerned for himself because he was about to experience the divine wrath of his heavenly father. Um, and that should be a wake-up call to us. Um, you know, for those people who have not come to a place in their life that have placed their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ to find forgiveness for their sins, they should hear from the Son of God that he was terrified of the wrath of his Father and all that he was capable of. And, and they should heed that warning and take seriously the claims of Christ. But I do think that there's a lot to what you're saying in terms of him not only being concerned about himself and what he was about to experience, but, but what his followers were about to experience as well. 